It's about that time of day again, folks. Welcome back to your nightly newsletter, boys and girls. Joseph James here. Monday evening, February 22nd, 2016. Cracking open this fourth full week. Last full week of the month of February 2016. We got a busy one on our hands here tonight. Another exciting newsletter for you guys tonight. Boy, we wrapped up an incredible week last week. What a great Friday session we had. Hope you guys we were able to make a few dollars off that newsletter on Thursday night. We're back here for a big week, though. We get a plan tonight on crude, S&P, gold, and euro. Starting off tonight, crude oil is bullish, but the short-term wedge and trading range tell us the best buying opportunities will likely come after a bearish correction tomorrow on the oil market. S&P is quite similar. It's also bullish. It's got a spike in channel and a trading range with both tell us on the E-mini to look for buying opportunities using bear traps at support levels below. On the gold, the yellow metal is bearish at first glance, but a quick look left and we can easily remember that big sell off last week's highs, right? Now we're back in the buy zone from last week's wedge. You got a really interesting chart on the gold. Euro is kind of similar to, uh, to, to, the, to the yellow metal tonight. Euro also bearish, trading at the lows of a multi-week channel. Euro looks pretty bearish, but at first, at first glance, but Look a little bit larger on the euro. We're all the way at the low of that multi-week channel, which tells the sellers to be patient for a bullish correction before selling down at these lows because buyers have the best shot in the short term, right? So crude, S&P, gold, euro, we got a great plan in store for you guys for tonight. Before we jump into charts, though, I do want to remind you the only place to watch the entire version of this nightly newsletter is on our trading blog here at Sideways Markets. If you're watching the video on our YouTube channel right now, it's only going to be a small portion of our nightly newsletter video. Make sure you follow the link in the description of the video and come over here to my trading blog. That way you'll get all four markets and the full length video. While you're here too, don't forget to grab your free pass in the upper left hand corner to come out and test drive our live trade room as a guest. Register for the mailing list right below the video on the left hand side. There's a spot to register for the nightly newsletter mailing list. That way you'll never have to miss another newsletter report ever again. I'll send you an email every evening when they're ready. Right below the video tonight on our blog, you'll see a spot to download all the charts that you see me using in tonight's video. That way you have those ready for you on your computer tomorrow. And then don't forget over on the right hand side, you can join as a trial member here at School of Trade, right? Learn more about how we actually do things here at SOT. You can learn more about what it means to be a member. And as always, we've always got someone standing by 24-7, 365 to give you guys a hand. Don't forget, no question too big or too small for our live support team. You ready to rock and roll? You guys ready to rock and roll? Roll those sleeves up. We get a busy one. Busy, busy week ahead of us. Lots of opportunities here for all the new and experienced traders using this newsletter. First of all, take a look at tomorrow's calendar. Tuesday, February 23rd, last full week of the month. We've got Kay Schiller at 9 o'clock, Consumer Confidence at 10, Existing Home Sales at 10 a.m. 9 o'clock and 10 o'clock are going to be the big blocks of news events tomorrow morning. That should get the price action moving well for us. Remember, set a five-minute reminder five minutes before, five minutes after. We do not trade the news. We trade around the news, and then we use the market's reaction to place our bets afterwards. Don't forget, we teach all of our students how to trade around the news, how to analyze that news properly. As a, as a beginner member here at School of Trade, in our beginner's course, we talk about economic news and give you guys that strategy. And then come out and join me tomorrow morning in our live trade room. We'll open things up around 8 o'clock Eastern time tomorrow morning, and we'll, ch we'll check the news calendar again tomorrow morning. As you can see, though, get some big news tomorrow morning early in the session. Jumping in here, open up some charts, starting off with crude, we'll go crude, S&P, gold, and we'll finish up with the euro. Crude oil is bullish, but the short-term wedge and trading range tell us the best buying opportunities will come after a bearish correction tomorrow. Today's aggressive move higher looks like a spike in channel at first, but the best fit was actually a bullish wedge or an ascending triangle, whatever the way you want to describe it. This is traded ultimately the same way as a spike in channel. We'll look for a deep correction back to the base of the wedge, followed by seller failure for the most reliable opportunities to be a buyer tomorrow. Also, real important, if the buyers fail to hold that correction zone down around 32.75, then we expect the sellers to try to send this price back to where it started today, down around 31.60. 
If price decides to push higher, we have a range, right, sideways range to work with. There's a bullish bias with it, so we've got to be careful buying into the high of that range. We're going to use range rotation and the two try rule for the best buying opportunities from there. As you can see, there are a couple key components here. First of all, we have that bullish wedge, right, that bull wedge, that ascending triangle that we talked about, right? That's going to be the first piece of this puzzle. Real important things to understand about triangles, these are ultimately the same thing as a spike and channel. These are going to be pretty much the same thing, right? Spike and channel will have a spike up and a channel. Wait for a deep correction back to the base of that channel, right? Deep correction back and then buy the correction. That's the way we trade a spike and channel. An ascending wedge, pretty much the same thing. Pretty much the same thing. An ascending wedge would be really, really similar. Up to that point is that range between that last swing and the base of that channel. That's going to be your correction zone, right? And then back up we go. So whether we're looking at a spiking channel or an ascending triangle, it really doesn't matter. They both tell us the long-term trend is bullish, but that spike, right, that starts off this move higher likely got everybody already in this market. So we got to see some profit taking. We have to see price come back. Price has to correct lower because all the buyers who saw that price spike higher today, they're not going to want to buy at such an expensive price, right? Remember, it's buy low, not buy high, right? So we want to buy low, and so we're looking for a correction back into our correction zone. Now we're back to the chart here now, and you can see there's that right there's that ascending triangle that we drew in and then of course this is going to be right kind of your correction zone right back here right this area right back here so we're looking for price to correct lower right now as it pulls back lower the first opportunity is going to be seller failure right sellers will chase it they get stopped out we can buy right into the stops then holding pullbacks, buying pullbacks on the way back up. Keep an eye out for this 3406. That 3406, you know, that's going to be the tip, right? Kind of the point of that of that ascending triangle that is oftentimes the easiest target as we go higher, right? So correct lower, right? Dig into that, dig into that deep correction, get it a cheaper price. Okay, correction zones right around this 3275. Then after we pull back, we assume at that point sellers will confuse this as a bearish market, right? They'll try to sell that next pullback. If they're successful, then they have they have the chance. If they're successful, they have the chance now to send this all the way back to 3161. They've got to get through some significant support levels before they get there, right? But assuming for the bulls though right now, the bulls want to see those sellers fail so we can buy right into their stops after the deep correction. Then look for the next pullback. That next pullback will solidify the buyers maintaining control. The one thing you got to worry about, though, is, again, this trading range, just watch out for resistance at 33.75. There's a little trend line that I drew overhead here. That will be resistance. And then really the, the, uh, the juicy target here after that correction is going to be back up right to the to that spike right that's going to be the most reliable target in the short term if we can reach that target in the short term we'll then watch and see do the sellers take it back lower right or right do the sellers do the profit taking from the buyers result in sellers getting stopped out again and then we can look for a second leg higher don't forget we're talking about crude we trade this market every morning at 8 a.m eastern time so what i'm going over with you right now we're going to do it all together tomorrow morning live in real time price goes lower right look for bears to get trapped seller failure right into a failure opportunity for the buyers into a pullback as the price goes higher watch out for the overhead resistance watch out for the top of that range and again the ultimate goal is to get back to the tip of that triangle or that wedge at 3406 once we get there the majority of the buyers will take a hefty profit off the table that should result in a lower low if the sellers grab it we make a run back to these lows if the sellers cannot hold it we then go for a second leg higher right we go for a second leg higher what if price doesn't pull back right we're expecting price to pull back what if it doesn't if it doesn't pull back, 
we're now inside this trading range, right? What if price goes lower? We got that covered. What if price goes, well, hold on one second though. If price goes lower here and we don't hold this correction zone, don't forget that's going to be a failed spike in channel, a failed bull wedge, and we're, we will see sellers now attack that 3161 as we go lower. What if we go higher here? If we go higher, we have to be aware that we have a bullish bias to this trading range, right? Expect range rotation. We're now at the low of that trading range, which means we should expect rotation back to the high. Once we get back to that high, this is where the buyers have to take a break from being a buyer right now, take some profit. This is where we're going to be looking for that two try rule, right? What I described in the text here, the two try rule. The two try rule, basically what you're expecting when we get back to the high of that range is you're expecting for rotation back to the low, then back to the high. So it's pretty easy to see here right now that if you want to be a buyer, buying the low of that range, right? After that rotation higher is going to be the best opportunity, right? Buying the low of that range. You may not get it though. I'm going to give them two tries. One try, two tries to get down to the low of that range. If they can't get down to the low of that range, this price is going to aggressively shoot higher. And then we're going to be able to use an A, B, C, D for a long-term target, right? So that's going to be a little bit, it's going to, we're going to have to see what happens if it goes higher, right? If it goes lower, it's pretty easy. Look for bears to fail so we can buy it back up. And again, the target is back at the point of that triangle. If it goes higher, the problem is now we're buying into resistance. We don't want to buy into resistance, right? Give them two tries, once, twice. If they make it back to 33.23, look for a bear trap at the low to buy the low. Bullish bias to that trading range. The challenge comes, though, if we get up to that high, give them once, give them twice, but if they can't make it back to that low after two tries, seller failure, just, just don't buy into that 33.75. That's going to be the biggest trouble overhead. If it shoots higher, look for that breakout pullback. The breakout pullback, I always like to wait for the sellers to try and fail, right, to keep buying it higher, and then we'll look for two legs up tomorrow and we'll go from there again the best opportunity right now is going to be a bearish correction followed by seller failure so we can buy that sucker at a discounted price right at a discounted price look for that pull back to 32.75 for the next opportunity to go higher here moving forward from the crude we'll move now to the s p 500 again don't forget We'll be talking about crude tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. when we break open our morning routine in the trade room. Even the S&P is bullish with a spike in channel and a trading range, which both tell us to look for buying opportunities using bear traps at support levels below. The beginning of today's session started with such strength that we and we assume buyers will be waiting for a deep correction to get into the next move at a much lower price. I would imagine most people weren't trading last night, Sunday night at midnight, right? I, I would imagine most of us are probably getting ready for a busy week ahead. So most of us probably missed this just exceptional move. I mean, 30 handles higher. When was the last time you saw that to begin the week on the S&P, right? This is, this, is, this is not the old S&P we've been used to over the past 10 years. This is definitely a market that loves to move right now. The beginning of today's session, like I said, started with such a bang that we assume the buyers will wait for a deep correction because they're not going to want they're not going to want to buy this high price. Correction levels waiting for us below are at 1931, 1931 and 1924, right? 1931 1924, those are definitely going to be our correction areas. Those look great. But if they can't hold below 24, we will likely slip all the way back to where we came from at the end of uh, last week and, of course, at the beginning of today's session down around that 1908 and a quarter. If price holds this pullback and pushes back to the highs, we have a trading range to work with, and we'll look for range rotation, right, and that two-try rule, just like we talked about on crude oil, right, just like we talked about on the oil. Looking at this chart here right now, a couple key components. This one is a lot easier to see as a spike in channel, as you can see, right? This one looks like a spike in channel. And, of course, we just talked about the spike in channel, right, the spike in channel. You guys are experts on that right now. Remember, spike in channels, they tell us focus on the direction of the spike, they also tell us 